Hey, I'm Jeff Skaversky. Today on Inside the Huddle, presented by Sports Kita, I catch up with Emmy award winning sportscaster Darren Haynes. Haynes is a former ESPN Sports Center anchor. He's currently the main sportscaster at CBS in Washington. Haynes has been recognized by the NAACP for his work in the community. He does a lot of work in the community with aspiring journalists. He hosts seminars around the country trying to uplift the next generation, reminding them never to give up on their dreams. We will talk to Haynes about that and more, of course, what's going on with Washington sports, the commanders and the wizards and the nationals. A lot to talk about with the one and only Darren Haynes. Darren, what's happening? How are you? going on, man? How are you? Great. So I'm really impressed by this. I'm looking at your bio and I'm really impressed by this NAACP award, most influential blacks. What, what does that mean to you? I know you've won Emmys, but what does that mean to you? So that's, that's, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because a lot of people actually don't bring that up. They bring up the Emmys and all the other type of stuff. Um, I firmly believe in giving back to the community that raised you. And and I know a lot of people along the way, no matter if it was my mentors or you know football, basketball coaches that have helped me along the way, I try to do the same thing for the community. And and a lot of times I don't do it for recognition. Um, but I remember when I you know I received that award and it was a shock to me and it and it felt really good to re- to to know that people are recognize what you're doing. And um, I don't know, maybe it's the the teacher in me. Cause I wanted to actually be a high school teacher until my mom was like, why don't you get into broadcasting? And you know, now I give her 10% of my check. I don't know any mom that would say going to broad. Most of them are like, don't do it. It's, it's a well, terrible. <laughs> I, I used to make up this fake radio station at home. I call it smooth groove in the afternoon. I had like two listeners, my mom and my brother um, rating sky high. But, uh, but I, I also played sports and she was just like, why don't you get into sports broadcasting? Um, so I ended up switching my major. But, you know, the, the teacher side is still in me. And so to give a young person and all young boys and girls, and then especially ones that look like me, that, that may, maybe they're set up where they don't have all the opportunities like other people, at least to help guide them along the way, along the way to have a better life or go down a, a, a you know, road B rather than road A, which would maybe get them in trouble. I'm all for that. Um, just like the way I like covering stories of athletes. I love watching high school athletes and playing college and play in the pros. I love their journey. I love to watch a kid who maybe I've met and there's plenty of them in elementary school or middle school or high school. And now like I see them graduating from college. Right. Um, and I know that along the way, I help them a little bit. Like I sleep better at night being that person and the NAACP recognize that. And, and I put that on my bio real quick. <laughs> no, I, I saw and I'm impressed. And so was there a moment when you were a kid where you met a professional athlete or a broadcaster or somebody famous and you said to yourself, wow, they, they really inspired me, whether it was a quick meeting. Was, was there a moment when you were a kid that kind of led you down that path? Hey, I want to kind of do that for somebody else. Okay. So that's so. what's funny is growing up, my dream, the first dream, not the backup dream, was to be an NFL player football player how's that working out it's (laughs) you know I I still have the college trophies you know but the but the NFL yeah that that I I don't I don't have an NFL helmet in this 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 media room it's just college and high school and pop Warner. but uh Lawrence Taylor was that guy for me as a uh back when he was playing like I wanted to be like that guy obviously he's had his own struggles and stuff like that so I learned from his mistakes um but, there, but someone who really kind of took me under his wing, who still gives back to the community, is a guy by the name of Leonard Jihad. He's okay. in New Haven, Connecticut. And I mean, he, for some reason, it's, it's in his heart, his passion to help out young kids like me, because he was my Pop Warner coach. So I knew him since I was eight years old. And he has literally been like a brother or father figure to me still to this day. And he still does that. And out of passion. So I, that's a guy I look up to. I love to give somebody famous, but like it's Leonard Jihad, who's actually a pretty known name in New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah. And I guess growing up in Connecticut and then working in Bristol at ESPN had to be a thrill. Now I do understand, okay, they become jobs and it becomes work, 
But that initial moment growing up in Connecticut and then going to work at ESPN and being on Sports Center nationally has to be just almost like the moment, like, what am I doing here? Yeah, listen, man, I go back to Connecticut. I have home cooked meals at my mom's house. I have home cooked meals at, with my wife, um, seeing a lot of old friends. It, it was a dream come true. Like, don't get me wrong, Connecticut is not the, yay, the most exciting place to live, but it did mean a lot to come back to the place where I grew up in. And that's where, like, my junior broadcast program or my Destined for Change program, I mean, really flourished because even though I was living in West Hartford, you know, 35 minutes away, I, I can go right back to New Haven. And the kids knew who I, who, who I, who I was. Um, so I was really able to make a true impact on the community that I, I was raised in. Um, but yeah, that was star status for me, man. That was, that, and and what's, what I tell these young kids to this day, because you know, I, I was one of the like 150 anchors that were laid off in 2017. I always tell these kids like, hey, do this to achieve your dream. Do this to achieve your dream. Set yourself up to surround yourself around the right people so you can, so you can achieve your dream. But nobody ever tells you, like, what do you do when you lose your dream? Right. Nobody ever told me that. And I had to learn that. What and, did you um, learn? What, what did you learn in that moment? Because it's not your fault. It's not your work yeah. performance. It's not who you are as a person. It's literally money. It's a money decision. It has Correct. nothing to do with you. You're just a name on a piece of paper. I think what it really came down to was, I, and I'm literally making this up because I never had to answer this question before. Um, so I appreciate your question. Like you go to sleep and you have a dream. You have multiple dreams, different dreams every day. Maybe that's how real life is. Like you can have a dream about doing something, but there's also different types of dreams you can have. And although my ESPN dream has now ended, that was one particular dream that I had. And now being in DC and, you know, my wife is like, where do we put these these new Emmy awards that I receive, you know, I'm trying to move the wedding picture over now. Um, like I would have never imagined in, in five years, 11 Emmy awards and, and, you know, five straight best sports anchor awards in his region. I like, that's a dream come true. You get what I'm saying? Like, right. like I learned that dreams look, they, you know, or, or they look different, but they yet still, still bring that same satisfying feeling. And along that, that journey as well is to like never give up on yourself, to believe right. in yourself, to know that you're talented and, and someone will, you know, sign you up right away. And it, and it came true, man. I, it, I hate to say this. I'm testifying right now. I love ESPN. Absolutely love that. I had tons of fun. But where I am right now, I'm having so much more fun because I'm allowed to be myself. Right. I don't go to work like, ooh, they may not want it in this way, that way. I go to work and I'm like, hey, man, it's Darren. Let's do this. Right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the fun you're having in Washington. It's not fun watching these teams play right now, right? I mean. Which, every, which team are you talking about? <laughs> all of them. They all, lack of a better term, they all stink right now. And they're all kind of coming off, you know, the Nationals and the Capitals had a good run a few years ago. That is over. Washington's kind of a mess. Could they be a surprise team? The Commanders. Um, then you have the Wizards. They feel like they're stuck in no man's land. The state of Washington sports right now, you would characterize as what? The opposite of what they said uh, a few years ago, the uh, District of Champions. When we, when, you know, when the Capitals won, Nationals won, or Mystics won, shoot, our, our, our arena team that's now like gone uh, won. Uh, but yeah, like we, we've, we kind of hit the rebuilding rock bottom, even though the Capitals are not there yet. But you can tell like the Alice Ovechkin days are about to be over and, and we're going to probably have that type of rebuilding days. Um, but there's really not a lot to cheer for in D.C. right now. Like you, like you mentioned, the, I can go on for days about what's going on with the Washington Commanders. And, and you know, they're not they didn't make the playoffs last year after, you know, winning the NFC East the previous year. Um, Capitals, for some reason, after winning the Stanley Cup, they can't get by the first round again. Right. Um, something that has plagued them for years when it came out to to postseason play. The Nationals, I mean, like. We knew that was going to happen, like all the star players are gone. Um, and it's funny because now my shows are like leading with like the Baltimore Orioles and their winning streak. Um, like that's what we have to lean on now for, for baseball because of how bad the Nationals are. 
Um, like how disrespectful is that to like go to your neighbor instead of your own house to like, and it's the Orioles who are just, they haven't been good since Cal Ripken. Right? Correct. But it could, you know, the, what the Orioles are going through could be the blueprint of what like the nationals are going to go. through. Right. You know, you're going to have those, those tough days. Um, but really like the wizards. Yeah. They, you know, they, they re-signed Bradley Beal, but still you have pieces where it's like, okay, we have some good pieces, but like, not enough to contend for a championship. Right. Let, let's but let's talk about the Wizards in particular. I mean, could Beal attract a Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving? Or he's an NBA star, but can he attract, you know, stars attract stars? Those two guys are looking for a new home. Washington, no disrespect, may not be the uh, you know, top city they're looking at, but could they end up in Washington? Could Beal attract them? So I think Bradley Bill definitely has a relationship with other players where he can attract talent to Washington, D.C. Absolutely. But it's all going to come down to will these other NBA players want to come to D.C.? You know, because right. right now they're not a title contender. And listen, Kevin Durant kind of made it clear, like he can be from PG County, like whatever, like he can be from this area, but he doesn't want to come back here. I think which, we is weird, like, which is weird to me. You think, OK, a guy grew up there, grew up a Wizards or Bullets fan. He wants to be be at home. I mean, listen, there there are there are some people who you can say have outgrown where they grew up and they don't want to come back to that area. Now, don't get me wrong. If they threw the bank at a particular player, I mean, money talks. Um, but I, I mean, I know a lot of people who don't necessarily want to come back to their hometown um, because they may not want to be around those distractions, all these people that you know that you grew up with, and they, yeah. you owe me this, you owe me that. Hey, hook me up with this. Like that's a lot of distractions when maybe you just want to play basketball or football or any any sport uh, that that that's out there. Um, Kyrie Irving, like, do we really want Kyrie? Great player, um, but also the, the distractions as well. Um, We've had guys match up. You've had guys match up with Beal. And so, you know, the Wizards, they had John Wall forever. And that looked like it was going to be maybe the best backcourt tandem for a decade. Yeah. And for whatever reason, that just didn't work. Well, I think John Wall got hurt. And and that ruined a lot of what they were trying to do for, for the Washington Wizards. I think, you know, after they made that Eastern Conference final where they lost to uh, the Celtics, I believe that was 2016 no, 17 season. Um, uh there was a lot of like momentum behind him and then John Wall got hurt and there was a lot of that's when we kind of saw Bradley Beal court sort of take that step and so we never really got like the true like prime like prime years out of those two guys together maybe adding another force in there maybe a good big man we, we never got that because John Wall got hurt and really if you look at it John Wall has still he hasn't played the same since right because when he was gonna make his comeback next thing you know that's when they traded him before even training camp even started. And Beal um, wanted another year with him, to my understanding. And there were yeah, like he squashed that whole beef. Like they they thought like yeah. they had like beef against each other and stuff like that. But yeah, that 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 never happened. Right. And so there was, I guess, rumors that there was some animosity there and some tension, but Beal squashed that. I mean, what was there a feud there going on, or was it just a misunderstanding or just that's that's a great question. Report, is that poor reporting? I think I think there's this truth to it a little bit. I think where there's smoke, there's a fire. Maybe they didn't like they didn't hate each other, but I think they probably had some normal on the court things where, hey, I need you to do this, I need you to do that. Hey, right. step your game up here, or I need you to play better defense, that kind of thing that maybe they necessarily weren't happy with each other about. But they knew there were two good players that needed to come together. Um now, for PR standpoint, Bradley Beal may say, like, nah, nah, we're cool, just to eliminate the distractions. Um, but, like, I, I haven't seen Beal and, and Wall, you know, I haven't seen any pictures of them hanging out anytime soon. So, right. but you know, look, it, could, it could be a marriage, right? Like, your wife is like, hey, I thought you were going to take out the trash. I thought yeah. you were going to do it. You, you know how you you know how marriage is, man. Like, yes, man. So I get it. Like, okay. And so sometimes that stuff is overblown just because you get into an argument about something does not mean you don't love each other. Correct. Absolutely. And so that can be, I guess, when you read it, I always joke, if I read this out loud in court, it would sound worse than it truly is. Absolutely. And so I kind of joke about that kind of stuff with my friends and say, maybe they just had a disagreement here and there about little things and it gets overblown. And so let's talk about the commanders. There's all sorts of chaos and things going on there. 
Hold on, let me get my binder of notes. <laughs> you have a binder? Here. <laughs> All right, I'll get out. You said you could talk about it for days. I know, I can. Uh, let's let's not take up that much time. But first off, is, is Carson Wentz the answer? Third team in three years. Um, he has McLaurin. He has a speedy wide receiver in the draft, a rookie coming in. Is, is Carson the answer? Will this thing get figured out in Washington for him? So Carson Wentz is the temporary answer. But if, if Carson Wentz plays like the way he did in Philly when, when they first drafted him. Which, which Carson Wentz? There's two. Uh, <laughs> the Carson Wentz that was that brought his – that made the, the Eagles very successful before he got injured and they the won the Super Bowl. Yeah, so the 2017 yeah. Carson. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we, we need that Carson Wentz to show up. And he may have all that. I mean, he looked good during, during OTAs and minicamps. But then, but then again, you know, they're going against each other. Like, everybody looks good. Right. Um, so if they can get that Carson Wentz, um, I think Washington can do some amazing things. Like you were just mentioning, he does have the talent around him. That's something that they wanted to build around their quarterback position. Um, and and you, you mentioned the Terry McLaurin, who they obviously got that extension with. Jahan Dotson out of Penn State, who has been absolutely outstanding uh, during the organized team activities in, in, in minicamp. And if you can get Curtis Samuel, uh, who's been dealing with you know, his, his injuries, if he can play like the Carolina Panther, Curtis Samuel, um, and then you get a, a Logan Thomas, who's a tight end, back from injury, like those are some legit weapons that Carson Wentz has no excuse to not be successful with, with if they're all on the field. All right, Daniel Snyder, a lot going on there. Do you envision a scenario where he loses the franchise, where the NFL or the owners vote him out? Is it that toxic? Is it that bad? To your understanding. So is, I'm going to go part by part here because there's, there's so many different facets to this. Is it that toxic now? No, they've changed a lot of things. But from what happened in this whole investigation in the past history, absolutely. It is, there's a lot to where I've never been so exhausted in my career. I'm not even exaggerating. So exhausted every single day there seems to be something new and, and there's, and it's so deep and so much, so many storylines of this person allegedly being assaulted, sexually assaulted or sexually harassed. Um, I talked to the former employees. I, I've spoken to many people off the records like this, like all these people are not just like, Hey, like guys, let's make this up. Right. There's, there's some truth behind it, but you know, you go through the legal system and stuff like that. And, and let's be real, there have been people who have been totally guilty and they got off. Um, and so the thing with Dan Snyder, he's always lawyered up. Um, so no matter what allegations are against him, Dan Snyder is a guy who's going to fight to the very end. The one reason, the only thing that I believe which will really get Dan Snyder booted out in regards to some of the owners uh, uh, voting him out will be the financial improprieties. Um, basically, the stealing, you know, basically stealing money from the NFL, the owners, that, that big pot, that the revenue that everybody shares. Like if you were my boy and, and I stole money from you, even if it was, if I went to your house and I stole the $20 off your table, you'd be bothered by that. It, it's trust. It comes down right. to trust, whether it's, whether you took a, a Snickers bar or you took a money or whatever it is, it comes down to trust. Can we trust? And by the way, I mean, Washington Redskins commanders, they are one of these iconic franchises, yep. you know? And so you, you have to almost protect that and protect that NFL shield. And by the way, the allegations are disturbing. Um, there's no if, ands, buts about it. Yeah. So, you know, the, if, if, so I'm trying to, I'm going to take this one, like not small step back, but just to provide more context to all this. So, so they're going back and forth, the oversight committee and Dan Snyder's lawyer. They, they're really going back and forth. Honestly, I firmly believe like the hearing probably will never happen. Um, they'll keep pushing it out until January, where then all of a sudden maybe, you know, the Republicans take over the House or something like that. And that's not on their agenda. It could happen. You know, one of the, the you know, one of the letters I got from Dan Snyder's uh, team was saying that he's still voluntary. He still wants to testify. He's voluntarily saying, hey, I want to testify. But there's these certain things that the Oversight Committee wants to address in this hearing that Dan Snyder's camp is not cool. They want to know all, they want to receive all the evidence, all the details. Okay, what do, 
what questions are you going to ask me? I don't want to be blindsided by anything. And that's how court usually works. Um, the oversight committee necessarily doesn't want to want to do that. And so that's why you have this back and forth where this July 28th hearing may not ever happen because these things that that Dan Snyder's lawyer wants the oversight committee to agree on, they don't want to agree to it. Sure. So it could go it could go back and forth. It may happen. Who, who knows? But I just see a lawyer thing going back and forth where maybe nothing really comes out of this. But uh, do you see a scenario? And I kind of asked you this, but do you see a scenario where he could not be the owner of this team at some point? So I originally said a while ago, I, I, I don't see him ever not owning the team. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with that because it's, it takes a lot for that to happen. I think there's probably also skeletons in the closet of some other owners because um, we already know there's, there's been you no know, allegations or stuff leaked out in, in regards to like Gruden coming from that, re- from that report or stuff on Bruce Allen, who Dan Snyder and Bruce Allen have beef against each other. Um, I just, yeah, I'm going to, I just, I know a lot of the people I, I talk to and all the fans, they want Dan Snyder out. I just, it's, it's just going to take a lot for that to happen. So I, I have to say, no, I don't, I don't see that happening. And the question becomes as well, when you talk about football, does everything going on off the field with the owner impact the team on the field? It's easy to say no, it's easy to say no, but the question becomes players are getting asked this every single day. Um, and it becomes a huge storyline in that locker room at that podium with the quarterback who probably Carson probably knows nothing about what's going on. He hasn't been there. Does it become a distraction where it's an issue on the field? So for the players, I think it's, it's, it's a distraction when, when they have their media session. I think when these guys hit the field, they don't think about yeah. that, that at all. I do think it is a distraction on how Ron Rivera is trying to manage the entire team, trying to change the culture, something that he wanted to, wanted to do. And, you know, I've had conversations with, with Ron in regards to, you know, Hey, I'm trying to change the culture, but this stuff keeps coming back in. And it, it is annoying. It does affect him. And, and when he's trying to change something, but yet the past keeps messing up with his future, that becomes annoying to him. Because Ron Rivera is this guy who said, I'm going to change the culture. So I think it does affect him in some shape or form. The players, I don't, I don't think so. And quickly, last thing for you, the Washington Nationals, you know, they're in this, I guess, rebuild mode. What is the sentiment among Nationals fans for Bryce Harper? Do they have any ounce of respect for him or do they just truly, have they gone from love to hate because he crossed enemy lines? So... Obviously, as soon as he crossed enemy lines, it was immediate hate. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, like that's, that's out there, has been out there for a long time. I will say this, though. People don't really talk about him. But has it cooled when he steps into the batter's box? Oh, you got to boo him. Yeah, but it, is, it, is it as bad as I remember J.D. Drew coming back to Philadelphia after refusing to sign with the Phillies? And I remember other players over the years coming back, getting booed and, you know, considered a traitor. I mean, Bryce, this MVP caliber guy leaves not only the nationals, but goes to their maybe biggest rival. And so has it cooled at all? Or is there an appreciation or did look the nationals win the world series without Bryce? Did that kind of cool things? And that's exactly what I was what I was going to bring up. So there's, there's many different things. So Bryce Harper leaves, you hate him. So obviously you're booing him, whatever. And then they win the, the World Series. So like the like that's the biggest, you know, payback that you can get. Like we right. won the World Series without you. And then think about this. Then they went through COVID where there were no fans to boo Bryce Harper. You know, like like and then there were restrictions the, the following year. So you really never had the, a nice chunk of time during that prime of when Bryce Harper left, except for that one year they won the World Series to really hate and boot Bryce Harper. Now, a lot of people still call him a traitor. I mean, you leave and you join a, you know, a divisional team. Like, absolutely. Um, but I, it's funny because I, I, I don't hear about it as much, like really at all. Right, right. Yeah, it seems like it has cooled off a little bit. Of course, you know, being on the other side, 
Phillies fans hate Nationals fans. It's just like this rivalry. It's not as heated as it used to be because the teams haven't been great, but it has been something obviously in the past, you know, for, for years and years and years. What, what does come up though a lot is, is the moves the Nationals have made. And when you look at, you know, what Bryce Harper was doing, you know, before his injury or, 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 or you know, the previous years and, and, and the way he's hitting. And then like a Trey Turner when he was with the Dodgers. And you look at Juan Soto, like you look at all like the some of the great players in baseball, you know, in the last like year and a half. And you're like, wait, they were all with us. Like, like, what are we doing? Like, how, why are we losing these guys? I hear about that more of us not being able to keep our guys around. And that's why a lot of people are like really like concerned about Juan Soto. Like, we need to lock this guy in here or he's going to bounce. Right. But does he bounce because he doesn't have the team around him? You wonder about that. I was just thinking about that yesterday because right. he had that taste of winning a world series. Like when you get the taste of the nectar, you know, that, that sweet flavor, you want that again. And so, you know, there's been, there's been rumors in regards to like an offer was out there and I don't, I don't, I, I don't blame him for not ex- accepting that. I mean, the, the dude's on a, on a hot streak right now. Um, but if I were Juan Soto and there are all these new players around me, even though they're my teammates, but not those core guys that, you really came in with and you're bonded with. And I know I can go to maybe the Astros, you know, uh, and the money talks too. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Jason, Worth. Jason Worth did it. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, Jason Worth did it. And then Worth essentially helped convince Bryce. Yeah. Go to, go to Philly. Yeah. yeah. Go to Philly. I now get I it. That was like a trade, like a trade off sort of like, yeah. 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 Well, Darren, thanks so much for joining me. Great insight, obviously, on your career, as well as what's going on with the commanders and nationals and wizards and uh, even capitals and things like that. I appreciate the time. Nah, thank you so much. That was Darren Haynes. If you like the show, click subscribe at the bottom of your screen. Also hit the bell button on YouTube and we'll send you an alert the next time we drop an episode. You can also listen on Spotify, the Apple podcast and all your favorite apps where podcasts can be downloaded. Just check the description below. Thanks for watching Inside the Huddle with Jeff Skaversky, presented by Sports Kita. We'll see you next time. I like that.